Good morning. So to prepare ourselves for this worship, I invite us to take a couple of deep breaths as we breathe in and feel the cool air coming into our nostrils. I invite you to think of a biblical word or phrase like Lord Jesus and then when you breathe out, feel all the warm air coming out, think of save us. Lord Jesus, save us. Eternal God, yours is the glory. We worship you. We honor you. Fill our hearts today, Lord, with your spirit. A spirit of fire. A spirit of justice. A spirit of peace. Guide our thoughts, Lord. Make us yours. us, guide us, be our light, Please stand as you're able and turn towards the baptismal font. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin Receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done, and by what we have undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. God, you created us in your image. Grant us grace to contend fiercely against evil and to make no peace with oppression. Help us to work for justice among people and nations for the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As 
the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord? and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God stands to charge the divine council assembled, giving judgment in the midst of the gods. people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land, but when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms and administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. 
Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destituted, uh, prosecuted, tormented, of whom the Lord, world, word was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and in holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, <coughs> I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I'm under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against the mother, mother and her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it's going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. As my wife Stephanie was pulling out of the driveway this past Monday with our son Giacomo to take him to GW University in Washington, D.C., I felt a lump in my throat. Our first son was on his way out of the nest on his new adventure in life. As I was waving goodbye to him, our daughter Desiree pointed out a beautiful rainbow emerging from the clouds. And then I remembered God's promise of favor to all humanity. No harm will ever come to us by God's hand. Now that promise strikes me as trident, considering Jesus' promise of fire and divisions, even within one's own family. His good news will throw society into an uproar. This is not the consoling and peace-loving Jesus 
of many other passages. Because we have enough conflict and disagreements in life, we don't particularly care to hear more divisions. Isn't the church supposed to be a refuge from the storms of life, a safe haven where people smile and get along? And yet, conflicts are present in the church as well. What about the apostolic advice of being one-minded? Aren't we supposed to enjoy the unity Jesus prayed for on our behalf in the Garden of Olives? We can find in the church the same cultural and political arguments and tensions we find in the social arena. I was at a pastor's meeting this past week where it was evident that even pastors have diverging views on the proper response to today's social issues of race, sexual identity, immigration, health coverage, gun control, domestic terrorism. So if we hear people ask, what do we need the church for if we hear the same arguments and get into the same kind of conflicts we see in the world? Isn't the church to be different and not conformed to this world? Aren't we better off retreating to our safe space, maybe in the woods or on a boat somewhere, away from everything and everyone? What is a church centered on the gospel compassion supposed to do? What is the church's proper response to our infights? Are we to disband? Or do we want to learn what it means to be a city on the hill? We aren't a city on the hill just because Jesus said so. Yes, he acknowledged we are salt of the earth, light of the world, but we need to learn how to grow into it. We need to embody that light, the word of Christ. It's a matter of discipleship, of walking closer after him. There are no easy answers to our social dilemmas because nothing is black and white, and there are many nuances to life's issues. Even so, moving beyond party affiliation and seeking the truth is every Christian's journey and responsibility. Short of deep discernment and radical discipleship, the church engages in less than Christian behavior and even embraces evil. Think, for instance, how the church was divided over the issue of slavery or more recently, the struggle to maintain an identity during the years leading to World War II. The question is not to pick one verse of the Bible against another. We may find verses supporting opposing views. The question is one of interpretation, as Jesus tells us at the end of today's gospel. It's a matter of dis discernment. Is what we profess in line with the Spirit of Jesus? In an article dedicated to the life contribution of Dutch theologian Visser Hoot, the author writes, in his era and ours, parts of the church have supported oppressive xenophobic policies, while other parts lament their weakness in opposition to them. In his era and in ours, the church has been split by features of race, class, and political ideology. Looking farther out at the plague of apartheid in South Africa, Visserti Hooft was convinced that the church is called to be a harbinger of the new humanity in which all racial barriers have fallen. Opposing racism is not only a matter of Christians doing what they ought to do, but of being what they ought to be. The very identity of the church as an embodied witness to the gospel is at stake. 
Too often in his view, Christians first become committed to some social or political cause and only later they turn to the church for theological support and justification. It's like living with a double loyalty to Christ and nation or to Christ and party. When this happens, how can the church maintain its capacity to speak prophetically and not become a loudspeaker for a political party? Christians must start the other way around with God's agenda, the vision of the kingdom as set forth in Scripture. This is, in my view, what it means to be of one mind, to live, to choose, to speak, and to act with the mind of Christ. When we are God-centered rather than party-centered, then our being takes precedence over our doing. That must become our sole preoccupation. And so from this standpoint, we cannot be silent and risk irrelevance. When the gospel is at stake, when fear hijacks the conversation, when safety and security are sought in all places other than God, when the poor and the vulnerable are cruelly persecuted, then the church ought to shine the light of the gospel if she wants to ex exert any particular influence. Unfortunately, too many have reduced Christianity to private piety or minimized the role of the church in God's mission. The Christian faith is not about seeking our personal salvation, but about allowing ourselves to be used by Christ through the church for the salvation of the world. Biblical salvation is never individual. Salvation must be communal. It's not ethically possible for a Christian to be indifferent to the plight of those who suffer. By virtue of the baptism we have received, we do not belong to ourselves anymore. We have taken on Christ. We are Christ's and partake in his baptism. So, Jesus is not against peace, as we see many times in the Gospel of Luke and throughout the Bible. But his message of release and transformation is bound to be divisive. We are invited to be at peace with other people as much as we can, as St. Paul invites us in his letter to the Romans. Indeed, by insisting on loving those who differ from us and by affirming our evolutionary interdependence, we have a chance at building better communities and strengthening relationships. We don't shy away from engaging in dialogue with those of opposing views, and we are not shy about calling out evil either. May the fire of the Spirit enable the church to model a pathway to unity and speak when occasion requires with a single voice. Amen.
was saying with the words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lord. Amen. Treasuring your promise to hear us when we call, we pray for the Church, those in need, and all of your creation. O oh God, you have given us your word. Like a fire, kindle its flame within and among us. Empower us for the work of breaking down walls, speaking up for the vulnerable, denouncing evil, and building a more just world. Lord, in your mercy, you formed the furthest reaches of the universe, yet your spirit dwells within each life. Be the companion and keeper of every creature, especially those endangered with extinction, and redeem all your creation in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, you rise up to rule the nations. Bless grassroots movements and guide elected officials to labor for a safe and peaceful world. Protect our nation from the harm of domestic terrorism. Teach the nations to be good and sensible neighbors to each other. Inspire us all to share food, land, science, and our arts for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You rescue those in any need. Be with surgeons, nurses, and all medical personnel who care for the sick, including Norma Dietrich, Al Korndorfer, Irma Hay, Eleanor Southby, and Helen Bies. Shelter all who need homes and feed all who are hungry. Comfort those who are bereaved, including Bob Maddox. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the friendship, community, and witness of those gathered here today. Send us out to be bearers of peace to those estranged from family or experiencing difficult separations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We look to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Be with us in the tragedies and troubles of this world and join us and all the saints with Christ in perfect joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and more we ask in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace.
let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise, call us to your table, grant us your light. When the earth was a, farmle a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, Give thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout amen. amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead amen. amen. O oh God, your breath. O oh God, your bread. O oh God, your wine. O oh God, you are fire. O oh God, most majestic, O oh God, most motherly, O oh God, our strength and our song. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you, now and forever. Let us pray the prayer Christ himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. O oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world, that more and more people we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
What is our mission? Go in peace, serve the Lord.